Hey there, thank you for tuning into SimTech channel. Have you ever heard of the term voltage dependency loads or voltage dependent loads? Well, in power system or generally speaking in electrical engineering, you have different type of loads that can change the behavior or characteristics depending on the voltage across the terminals. So that is important because that can affect the power factor and the overall performance of your network. So in this tutorial, we're going to see how you can model this behavior in Power Factory uh, Dig Silent. Now I've got a load here that is basically drawing, as you can see, it's drawing 15 megawatt. So if we can just confirm this load quickly here by going into the load flow, and we can see that this is a 15 megawatt and four megavolt ampere reactive loads. Okay, so that is exactly what this load is drawing. And across the transmission line, I've got this T1 transformer. So let's go ahead and double click on it and see its characteristics. So this is a 40 MVA transformer that is stepping down from 230 kilovolt to 20 kilovolt. Okay, now if I run this load flow uh, analysis quickly here and execute, right? So you can see quickly that the transformer is being loaded by 39.4%. Okay, now the per unit value here on this grid bus bar is one volt per unit, as you can see. But now, because there is some losses across this transformer, we are getting uh, a per unit value of 0 0.98 per unit across this feeder bus bar. Okay, now this means that the 20 kilovolt that is being stepped down here from 230 that voltage is now dropping to 19.7 kilovolt that is line to line now as a result if you run these analysis by taking account of a voltage dependency load then you're going to see some change on the characteristics of this load here because the voltage is no longer 20 kilovolt that this load was expecting so let's go ahead and just see that quickly here Okay, so I'm going to now check here on the consider voltage dependency loads and then execute. Okay, now when we execute quickly, you can see that there is a change here. It's no longer 15 megawatt, it's 14.5 megawatt and the reactive power also dropped to 3.9. Now, how does this work in Dig Silent? Now, before we look at how to model these uh, different type of loads in Dig Silent, let's just quickly recap on what is uh commonly known as zip load zip so z will be for impedance i for current and p for power so that is you've got constant impedance loads and you've got a constant current load and you also have a constant power now for a constant impedance load we can take an example of the vi characteristics of resistance okay now if you take a resistance of let's say one kilo ohm right and you connect it to a power supply and you start varying the voltage you're going to get this output response here that will be linear right because as you increase the voltage you're going to get an increase in current and when you start to map all of them basically linking you're going to get this characteristic curve that will show up okay so this is a constant impedance because your resistance is not going to change okay now we are uh, assuming ideal conditions okay because if you've got temperatures changes and all sort of things well your resistance may change okay no let's not go there let's assume it's gonna stay one kilo ohm constant impedance and this is what you're going to get okay now in power system you got all sort of constant uh, impedance loads that is like static loads motor operated valve and you got capacitors and also harmonic filters those are different type of uh, constant impedance loads that you can get. Great. Now let's take a look at the next one. That is the I. So that is the constant current. Now constant current, that basically means regardless of what is happening, the current is going to stay the same. Okay. Now a simple example here will be uh, the curve for a constant current charging of a battery. Okay now if you set your battery into a constant current mode okay so that basically the battery is going to change at 20 amp for instance you choose a 20 amps of current now your current is going to remain constant here now as 
your battery get full okay you're going to see the voltage is going to rise and rise and rise and rise and then the battery voltage is going to reach the maximum limit and at that point your charging circuitry of your battery is now going to move from a constant current to constant voltage so what's going to happen now is your current is going to decrease okay as now the voltage matches with the supply voltages okay so that basically what you get so you got a constant current regardless of what the voltage is basically doing okay now the next load basically the last type of load that we're discussing here uh, will be your constant power load and remember there are many type of load but we are trying to select the commonly known one and the next one will be the constant power okay as part of our zip load so in a constant power let's take for instance we take a motor here okay now as you can see this motor here got a 0 0.5 per unit power okay so that's a per unit power okay now regardless of what's going on here with the torque you can see the torque here is changing now the torque is proportional with the speed you know that when you are running fast when the motor is running fast the torque is less and when the motor is running at a slower speed there is a high torque now regardless of what the motor is doing going faster or going slower you've got a constant power being drawn from that motor so this is a constant power load that can be connected into a power system now what will this motor do if you've got uh, a voltage that basically change because remember this motor need to keep the power to a certain level it must keep the power to a constant power but now it's connected to a system that the voltage is changing so now that change in the voltage is definitely going to have an impact in all these different type of load that we just mentioned here now to basically simulate this in dig silent let's go ahead and look into these uh, options here now before we do that i just want to say that if you find this tutorial useful uh, or helpful please give it a thumbs up and also subscribe to simtech channel that will be highly appreciated and you are more than welcome to basically share this tutorial into your social media network okay now the basic settings here to basically uh, model different uh, configuration of loads is very simple here let's stop this load flow analysis quickly here so i'm going to double click on this load here and in here i'm going to click here on the load type because we already created a new type of load which was a general uh, load type here and i'm going to go in there by clicking on equipment there and load flow great now this here is where load behavior can be modeled so this exponent here you've got exponent a p uh, b p and c p now the first one here is the exponent value for constant power the second is for constant current and the last one here is for constant impedance now and the same goes for the power here and the same exponent also apply for the reactive power because we know that for a load that behave as a normal load or a constant load we consider the value of p and q to be constant as you have seen here okay when we run this thing we start considering the voltage dependency here we can see that we got the load here the active power was constant and the reactive power also was very constant as it was set here in basically uh, the load characteristics here okay but now if you're going to consider uh, the voltage dependency uh, characteristic behaviors then you have to alter the characteristics of p and q now having said that if you want to model for different load type these are the value that need to be at all so the zero will be for constant power the one for constant current and the two for constant impedance and that goes for, for the p and the q value but how do you change it you change it by basically setting a zero or a one on this coefficient here okay now right now you can see by default we've got a one here that is set with the exponent of two okay so that basically means for constant impedance okay and we've got another one here on q also on two and that basically mean 
for constant impedance okay so those are the characteristics for this load now i'm going to create a second load here so let's go ahead and add in a new load so i'm going to click on the load and add it onto uh, my feeder bus bar okay now i need to basically modify uh, this load here so let's go ahead and double click on it now the load flow characteristics of this load we're gonna put it the same so it's a 15 megawatt and 4 megavolt ampere reactive now we're going to add a new type that will be the general load now in the load flow settings since this is going to be a constant current load so we're going to change the coefficient here of the pb here that correspond to a constant current settings and we're going to also change on the q here okay so that basically what we need here and okay great so let's go ahead and add another one so we're going to add the third one here and i'm going to basically set this for constant power okay but uh, this is a general load and we need to configure it as always here so it's going to be a 15 and 4 megavolt ampere reactive so it's going to be a new type general load load flow and this is going to be a constant power so that means we need to change the first one here to a one because remember uh this is constant power constant current and constant impedance okay so the first load here is the constant impedance load so we can just confirm that quickly here okay so that's a constant impedance load great now it's important to basically keep things neat by renaming them great so now let's go ahead and run these load flow analysis with all these uh, three different type of loads here and see how the system is going to behave now firstly i'm going to uncheck here and just run it as a normal load okay then we're going to observe here what's going to happen here so as you can see here we've got a 15 megawatt 4 megawatt and that is exactly the same across every load so now let's just uh, increase the width here so that we can be able to basically read everything that is being displayed to us here okay great so i think this is good for us now here you can see that uh the loads are basically balanced here okay it's a balanced system uh, the voltage drop now the voltage drop went from 0 0.98 per unit to 0 0.94 per unit now why did the voltage across the bus bar drop that is because there is an increase in the loading on the transformer because remember this is a 40 uh, megawatt uh, 40 mva transformer okay let's just double confirm that here it's a 40 mva transformer now we've got 15 15 15 so which means the load is exceeding the capacity of the transformer so the transformer is overloaded as a result there is a, a huge voltage drop on the system and now despite the voltage drop on the system our loads are still basically drawing as we expect them but now if we run the simulation again okay and then this time around we check the consider voltage dependency loads then you're going to realize that this time around the voltages and the systems are going to be very different now as you can see here the active power on the constant impedance is 13.4 megawatt and on the constant current is 14.2 and on the constant power it's 15 uh, megawatt so constant power is basically keeping the same active power but all these different one now the system is trying to balance so that it can keep the constant current on the system and on the constant impedance it's also trying to balance so but now before we end this tutorial let's uh, go ahead and add another load now this time we're going to include a system that basically going to take account of all these three loads basically a zap system okay now a zap load here uh, if we can add an extra one okay well we need to add an extra cubic here on our bus bar and we can place our load okay now very quickly here i'm going to double click on this load and i'm also going to add the same parameter 15 
and the reactive power is gonna be 4 and I'm gonna create a new type general load okay and on the load uh, flow here so I'm going to add some coefficient here okay so let's go ahead and change the characteristics of this load so I'm gonna put a 0 0.4 here a 0 0.4 on the constant current and on the Q here 0 0.4 and 0 0.4 so this here basically means we've got a segregated type of load that is divided into different type of complex power so we got 40 percent is constant power another 40 percent is constant current and 20 percent is a constant impedance load so let's go ahead and just click ok and ok and then we can run uh, the load flow analysis having that still uh, checked and see how the system is going to react here now let's just expand this quickly here by increasing uh the font here to six grade okay now you can see here you got a uh, active power here is 14 uh, megawatt the reactive power is 3.7 so it is uh, quite a bit close to a constant current here but is not quite because this load here is now taking account of all the combination of these other load so basically that is it and you can also see the drop in the line also increase as we increase the loading on the transformer so basically guys that is it for this tutorial again if you find it useful please uh, gives it a thumbs up and subscribe to SimTech channel. That would be highly appreciated. Until next time, stay tuned for more tutorial on load flow analysis using TickSilent.